On this episode of Carnage, we're preparing the Superman for skids. Australia is a big country with not a lot of people, which means we have some fairly strange stuff going on. We have some very unique wildlife, very picturesque scenery, and insane burnout cars. So we have competitions, big dollar competitions, like with $50,000 prize money competitions just for burnouts. And people bring blown injected methanol fuel big blocks making 1,000 to 1,500 horsepower out just to burn rubber. It's all about destroying tires. So there's an event this weekend called Motorfest, and it's about 15 minutes from my house, so why shouldn't I get amongst it? So we're going to prepare the Superman for burnouts, because it is probably the best car that we have for burnouts. It does a mean skid, so with a supercharger it's got instant power, and it's got pretty good gearing. I think it'll do a pretty mean skid, so we've entered it for the six cylinder class at Motorfest, but I have to make some changes. So I have to put a tail shaft loop in it. I have to put a catch can in it. These are rules that every burnout car must adhere to. So today we're gonna to be prepping the Superman to go and do some skids at Motorfest. Okay, so the burnouts run under AASA rules and they mandate that every car needs a tail shaft loop. Now we just, use the two-piece tail shaft in the Commodore. And you know, there is kind of a cross member that runs right under the front uni, but it's not technically a tail shaft loop. So we need to put a tail shaft loop in there. We also need, so there's a tail shaft loop from VPW and ProFlow and an overflow bottle. So we need an overflow for the radiator. So this delivery has come straight from VPW. Ordered it Friday, it's here today, it's Monday. So overflow, tail shaft loop. They are nitrous bottle brackets for later, but yes, we are eventually going nitrous on the VN, but not for the burnout. So they can be for another day. Tar shaft loop. Okay, radiator overflow is important to keep fluid off the track. And this one holds about two and a half litres, so all the overflow. Wow, that's a it's quite a nice jug. Okay, let's have a look under here. So, put our loop around up the front. <laughs> Shit. Okay, let's try that again. All right, we'll hold it this time. Okay, so that's gonna be too long. So let's uh, snip, yeah, so those will line up with those holes. So how about, yeah, okay. So as usual with these brackets, I'm gonna have to do some adjusting and it looks like I have to cut off basically three sets of holes up the top and drill another set down here. 
This is where it starts. Right, let's start with two holes. See where we go from there. And there's one. And there's two. Right, let's go see how they fit. So we have some work ahead of us. Um, our first problem is when that sits against the floor, it still hits against the tunnel. So we're gonna have to shorten this down another set of holes, which we thought we might have to do anyway. Our second problem is this floor pan sits lower than this side, which has a heat shield on it. So we're gonna to have to cut away this heat shield um, and then get an, the other bracket and put it up there. But it's gonna have a worse problem of, you know, it's already gonna be higher again. So I'm gonna to have to really shorten this down and drill two sets of holes. And then this part, is too long here and here, so we're gonna have to shorten those legs down because when you put the bottom part of the loop on, it sits too low, so we have to shorten both halves to create our oval loop, which has to sit pretty much there to make all this work. So, this is pretty standard when it comes to doing you know, tar shaft loops. These kits are universal in that uh, they fit nothing. So, and every car is different. Every floor pan is different. This is gonna be much like the Volvo job, I think, but um, I'm gonna try and do less welding on this one. So, all right, let's get the cut and make it fit. <laughs> Okay, so that side fits now. Now I just need to shorten up the legs of our loop. Right, well, that looks like it's gonna work. Now I just need to remove this heat shield Let's do that. Right, so we're gonna remove the heat shield, but I don't really wanna remove the exhaust, so we're gonna do this carnage style. Dunsky. P.S. Okay, well now that will allow our loop to bolt together so we don't have to pull the tile shaft out every time we want to change something. But then, yeah, that should work. Hopefully. We have a loop. So now that we have our loop together, we've got the issue of, do I pull this apart again? Because I've tightened it up to make sure that the steel sort of all pulls together 
and that's the shape it needs to find itself in. So we've done that. Now we can pull this apart and then reassemble it around the tail shaft in the car, but that's going to be a real pain because you know you got to make sure all these holes line up and get the bolts through and then tighten them all up, all with the drive shaft in the road. Or I can just pull the drive shaft, the tail shaft out of the car and just slide that around it and do it that way, which kind of seems like the easier solution. So well, let's do that. shaft is out. Just the stocker, but it'll do for the moment. Well, let's have a look. So that is where we're gonna have to mount it, I think. Right there. Now, some people might say, you know, you've got this cross member here, that's under the tail shaft, why are you putting a loop in? Well, they need a 360 degree containment of the tail shaft. I mean, yeah, that might stop it from hitting the ground, but it won't stop it from tearing up through the floor pan. So that all the way around the tail shaft will stop it from coming up as well as down. Very important. But yeah, I think that's the good spot for it. About there. Right, so we have a tail shaft loop and it looks something like that, which uh, isn't marvellous, but it is what it is. Um, I put, might put some extra bolts in this one to kind of pull that leg down a little bit, but it does fit and it should do what it's supposed to do. So let's poke it up there. Remember which side goes where and that is where we're aiming. So there's a little bit of flex there. It can, it'll get pulled up into the floor pan. Uh, of course, now I'm gonna have to drop this exhaust, aren't I? Because I'm not gonna be able to do these bolts because they're right above the cats. <sighs> what a pain in the balls. Alrighty, drop the exhaust. Right, oh, hot metal. Okay, so we'll poke the bolts down through the floor and start bolt messing up. To make our job easier, we've pulled the front seats out so we could lift the carpet up a bit. We haven't pulled the carpet out completely, but we've lifted it up, spaced it up with some uh, narrow cardboard boxes, some old Ryobi boxes. And uh, now that that's lifted up, we'll just poke these down through the floor, go from underneath, nuts and washers, and hopefully this uh, will all be over soon. So there we have it, one tail shaft loop. Wouldn't say it's my best work, but uh, it's in there and it's done. And I've got to say this floor pan does not lend itself to putting in a tail shaft loop because you've got this big handbrake thing here and then you've got obviously this cross member bracket here, but it's in there and it's in the right spot. And I guess all we need to do now is slide the shaft up in there. That's what she said. And um, yeah, give it a test fit. Also, what she said. And look at that, 
it fits perfect. Nice and central. Beautiful. Make sure that's done up. There we go. All good. Right, so exhaust is back in, tail shaft loops in. Most importantly, it is less than six inches back from the front uni, which is on the sweet spot. So, tomorrow, catch can, drag out some burnout tyres, maybe a little test skid, not a big one, but a little one in the driveway. See how we go, but yeah. So that everything's on target for burnouts this weekend at Motorfest. But before then, let's uh, do this catch can. But that'll be in the morning. So it's a brand new day. Yesterday we did the tail shaft loop. Today it's gonna to be radiator overflow. Now the rules specify a minimum of one liter capacity. Well, that's two and a half liters, it's massive. So that should have plenty of capacity for our radiator overflow. I, I think if we fill that, we've got bigger issues. So anyway, I'm gonna mount it down here where this uh, charcoal canister is because the charcoal canister, well, we don't really use it anymore. So we'll lose that and we'll mount that down in there. Let's clear some space. Okay, this looks pretty simple. Uh, Okay, Gonski. Oh, we're not there. Okay, so just exploring our options here. I think it fits in up, up in here pretty easily. And I just gotta work out best location. Just under the power steering. Looks like the best location for it. Right angle action. Okay, so we're gonna use a nut cert on the bottom bolt and on the top side, I'm going to use, just clamp it around the chassis rail with a little flat plate. But uh, you'll see what I mean in a sec. But these nut certs are awesome. You just drill a hole, get it in the chassis rail there, and then squeeze the tool together. <clears throat> I like using steel ones because once they're in there, they ain't going anywhere. Oh, okay. All right, she's in. There we go. One nut set. Okay. Just mount the top one and we're good to go. Right. That is solid as. Okay, so. This is how it works. Radiator overflow is this long line that goes across here into the top of our factory overflow bottle. And then we have another overflow pipe that comes from this into our overflow tank of two and a half liters, our ProFlow overflow tank. And yeah, if that doesn't hold it, nothing will. So that is Dunsky. Kind of happy with that. All right, let's look at some burnout tires. So the major safety items when it comes to burnouts are battery location, make sure it's positively located, which ours is, um, radiator overflow, tail shaft loop, and then wheels. 
Now, they don't like you using alloy wheels. Now, we wouldn't use these anyway because we've got our drag radials on them and we're not going to uh, do burnouts on drag radials. They like steel wheels and remove the wheel weights. So you can't have wheel weights because at high RPM, the wheel weights go off into the crowd and yeah, no one wants that. So we've got some steelies over here. Let's have a look. All right, so we've dug into our big tile of tires and rims and found three sets of Commodore wheels with uh, tires. These tires, no good. I mean, they are hammered. So we'll get them stripped off rims and uh, have some other tires fitted on. We've got plenty laying around. These ones will be fine. We'll use them. And these ones, the rims are so rusty and crusty. I'm not sure I'll use them. I don't know. But what we will do is bolt them to the car right now and maybe do a little test kit because I don't care about these rims or these tyres. Getting the wheel weights off is pretty easy with a screwdriver just without really digging into your rim or your tyre. Just get a screwdriver behind there and it pops straight off. This one's only a little one. Bing! All right, wheel weight removed. Uh, where did I put that rattle gun? Of course, if you're gonna take up burnouts as a sport, you need to have a good rattle gun and we really recommend these Ryobis. Nice and easy. Wow, they're so crusty. And the last step is lock off the rear brakes. I'm going to use two. We did this on the Trolvo, you may remember, back at Summonat a couple of years ago. You can get away with one, but I like to just, uh, just in case it does push past the thing. All right, so now we should have no rear brakes. And now for a little test hit. Yeah.